Hello and welcome to my first official project of the winter. Uh, this video is filmed in November, in fact to be exact, November the 1st, 2020. And I acquired this um, a little earlier in the year. Uh, well, not that much earlier, actually in um, um, October, funnily enough. So I've only had this just under a month, so October the 5th I got this. So this is a Philips uh, Cubic Compo D8254 radio cassette player. Um, it goes rather nicely with my move-in sound and it doesn't feel as high quality in construction as either my Hitachi 3D Superwoofer Affair or my Sharp Double Cassette. But I like it because it has a lot of interest in 1980s features, such as these chrome accents around the uh, centre of the speaker, and the fact that it's bright red as well. It's sort of like a, a nice shade of red. Uh, the deck's previous custodian has actually cleaned it up quite substantially, and we're going to just have a quick look at it today to see if there's anything else that needs to be done. So, first off, let's get the radio on. which does seem to work. The aerial is intact as well, which is nice. We have separate controls for left and right volume. Might get some contact cleaner onto those, because they're a little bit uh, noisy, but not out of the realms of what I would expect. It actually has four wave bands, which is quite cool. It has FM, medium wave, long wave, and short wave. So let's see what we've got on the FM. Okay. It's finding it quite hard to get a stereo signal. Tone control still works. So, radio seems to work. It's also got this nice mono spatial control as well, which controls the depth of the sound because the speakers are actually detachable. So, you can detach the speakers, have the central unit, and then have the speakers elsewhere. So, for the tape deck, we are going to be testing it with that that is RD Blackmore's Lorna Doon. Lorna Doon Valley, funnily enough, is uh, fairly local to me, so that seems an appropriate choice. So let's have a look and see how this is going to go. I'm actually going to, looks like I'm going to have to start on side two, or rewind it to side one. So let's pop it in, and let's see if I need to rewind it at all. So it's obviously a downward facing transport. Yeah, so I need to rewind that. There we go. So what's the wait for that to rewind? I will pause the video. So it's just rewound. Let's see if it plays. So we're just waiting. Seems to. 
My dear father, John Ridd, had been killed by the dunes of Badrus while riding home from Porlock on Exmoor. A horseman stopped in the start. What's quite nice about it is it does actually have um what feels like it's actually got a motorized tape transport yeah servo controlled tape method tape transport me mechanism so it's sort of well not high end but that's a nice little feature nice soft touch this control fell on him, and instead of dividing the land they were divided from it the nobleman was still now i was told that um i needed to potentially change the belts on this but I'm not sure that I need to, you know. One thing that I will have a look at is um, I'll get the back off and we will take a look inside. Mainly because I'm curious to see how it's all set up inside of it. So speakers unplug like so and they unclip by just pulling these back and literally just come off like that so we'll pop the speakers out of the way and you can see on the back there that they have the coil around them so you can actually extend them to be in a different position should you so desire There we go, let's throw that out of the way. It doesn't look like you can... Um, oh yes, hang on, I was going to tell a line so you can't run it off batteries, but it would appear that underneath we have a battery compartment which takes C cells by the looks of it. Uh, how many use only zinc alkali batteries I would guess probably yeah. I'd s I want to guess I want to guess eight but I might be wrong on that assumption so it looks like it's sandwiched in possibly in sort of two sections because there's a screw inside there which is holding something in but this back section this back panel looks to be separate so there's a screw hole up here and no other screw holes on the back panel so I'm going to see if I can get that undone so we're going to, to use a deep reach cross head This one should do. There we go. So we'll do that. That one's the antennae screw so that holds the aerial in. There we go. And if I just move the aerial slightly, let's see what that does for us. Does that loosen? anything up at all. It does not, but there are clips on the side which appear to hold the back panel in, so I don't really want to damage the, uh, the trim on this, so I'm going to see if I can gently prise these out. I'll use a stubby screwdriver and gently does it one and two there we go you may find a similar setup underneath yeah you've got similar ones underneath there so you need to just gently prise out there so that's actually coming out quite nicely it's probably because this has been open recently and then you've got one down the bottom here gently tease that out and
there you go and you can see that the aerial actually appears to be held on to this board on the back makes contact with this so what it might be worth doing is you can see where it makes contact on these three here it might be worth just giving that a bit of a clean up with some contact cleaner which should actually sort of make things a little bit better I've just noticed it's getting really dark in here so i'm just going to put the light on there we go and that's better a bit of light on the subject so to speak so very sort of standard setup for the time uh, we have obviously power here the board itself is just held in with couple of clips and gently releasing the clips will allow you to very gently flip the board forward. You can see this here comes from the switch on the front panel here that makes contact with that. You need to make sure that you get that back in sync again because it looks like I've got it out of sync but that shouldn't be too difficult to get that back and working again but that does come out and you can see there that it has that which will engage with this switch at the front so it's not going to be too much of a task to actually get that sorted out but you can see that that activates the switch on the back there which is quite nice uh, what do we have quite nicely laid out very neat um, quite a few resistors on there as you would expect and a couple of chips i'm just trying to find which one would be the amplifier i guess this one here with the big heat sink is probably going to be our amplifier and it looks like yeah someone's been in here already with the switch cleaner so we don't need to do anything about that so that's good to know so let's just gently bring this forward and you are then exposed to the cassette assembly that will be the part if I needed to service that, which thankfully I don't. The belt does still feel fairly taut. That would be the area that would be a bit of a pain to get into. So if you had to get in there, I would say first off, you probably want to release this just to get it out of the way. You can do that by just gently pulling back the plastic that's holding it in on either side and popping it upwards and out like so. And that gives you a bit more space to work with. So the front portion of this is another section that's actually held in and I'm just looking down these holes to see if there are any screws. So there's no screws in that one, none in that one, but it looks like, having a look in there, the whole front panel is held into the unit with a series of clips so it looks like the panel at the front will actually unclip giving you access to that drive belt should you need to however on this occasion thankfully we don't actually need access to that drive belt so I'm quite pleased about that what I will do though is start to reassemble this but you can just sort of see in here what it takes to actually uh, you know to actually get into this deck now you see on the back here this is our tuner section this is obviously our tuner knob on the front there and you'll see that there is down the bottom here a little slit that we need to get this to fit into so it is keyed so that you can't get it wrong when you're sort of reassembling so we're going to try that now by, there we go, just gently putting that back into place. Make sure that that clips in there. 
So little lip here that you want to get it over, little lip here that you want to get that over as well. And make sure that this wire is tucked out of the way. There are little grooves on there to keep the wire in place. And then you have clip and clip. And that is back in place. You can actually tell by just looking in top there. And make sure that that has engaged fully. this which I might have to do by going in again with the torch and turn the front yep you can see that it's turning the, uh, the tuner itself so you can actually see that that has engaged quite nicely now the next one we want to get engaged is this switch at the top so If you look in here, you can see the points that you need to sort of clip into. It's basically there's two, effectively sort of two pillars on the bottom of this, and they will go either side of that. So to do that, we're going to go straight in. Now, unfortunately, I can't really show you this. Although, let me see if I can get it on this camera and I'll intersperse the video. There we go. So we can go in. So I can actually show you what I mean about those two points. If I get that to focus. I might need to put the torch on. So let's try and do that. Might not be able to on that one. But if we focus in there, there we are. And that is currently aligned. So this can go in the oh, other way around. This can go in like so. That will nestle quite nicely between there, which will then allow us to go over the switch and not perfect by any means. So that will be fully that way for this position. So I actually need to do this with two hands. So we'll have the switch fully that way. We'll replace this in there. There we go. Try going towards the middle, it might be better. So, the middle is about there. Yeah, that's easier than it looks. Oh, sorry, it's harder than it looks, rather. Put that one there. Phrases mixed. Right, let me just pause this and see what we can do. So I've just discovered the easiest way to actually get it in is to do it when the back is lowered. So if the back is lowered, there you go, it fits in perfectly. And it just needs to put, be put into two positions really. So radio on, radio off. and what looks like a neutral central position. So let's just hold that there. And what I might have to do is come down, which I 
can't do. So we're going in at the bottom again. Too much strain on this as this will break if I try putting strain on that. So I might have to I might have to try and fiddle it in with this back in place, which is quite annoying unless you do it this way. So you go gently in like we did before. really fiddly. So it's there. Uh, yeah, that's not how it works. It needs to be there. That is quite, quite a, quite a quandary, that one. All right, let's keep trying. So after a bit of fiddling, we now have it in a position where we have radio off and radio on which is exactly what we want. What I've also done is adjusted this potentiometer here so the FM reception actually seems to be quite a bit better actually. What I'm going to do now is just unplug that, remove those two, grab the back which is here. Make sure that we have our switch on the top here lined up, ready to go onto this switch. The record switch there is engaged. This switch is engaged, so we should just be able to pop in at the back and side, like so, and come upwards. Press that side clip slightly, which I've just done, and up, and I need to just move this here, just to squeeze it together, here, there, making sure that that is lined up ready on to the switch, which it is, and whoop. there we go, let's check it on this side, we need to check it on both sides, this is, I've got to be honest, this is one of the more fiddly ones I've had to take apart. To the pain of doing it for you, my subscribers, so you don't have to. <laughs> there we go, and that's actually not aligned. So there's a couple of knobs here, or latches there, which are aligned. So let's just bring that up there. And I've just realised what's happened. That got in the way. Be a lot easier now now that we don't have something else foreign on the back of it when i mean foreign i mean a foreign object there we 
Okay. Perfect. There we go. So all we need to do now is just pop that screw back in, which I'll do now. There we go. That's going in. I want that to just slide back in. There you go. There we are, and then the speakers. Look at that, so there are vents on the side and the vents actually line up with the speakers, which I think is really cool. So the speakers just go and nestle into the vents on the side of the unit, clip in place, and then you got, this would be, if it turned around, this would be our left. So this would be, left actually I'll just have a look in here so you can unscrew this so you can actually inspect the um, quality of the solder which still looks fine it means that if you do happen to break these off you can resolder um, another jack on the, t on the top which is quite handy so nifty little hook there to pop the speaker cable over that one would be left this one, you can see better on this side actually, the one I was on about. That on the speaker, that on the side. Both go in like so. Clip goes over, speaker is now in place. I like design features like that, I think it's sort of a really nice touch. So, this one will come over actually i need a bit more length on this one so this one will come over tuck into there and go into right there we are that's our right hand side and what we can do is just take up the slack like so and clip that into place there turn it around and pop the power back in Let's see if those adjustments I've made to the aerial make any difference. So we'll put it on tape on mode for the minute. Add that in. Pull up the aerial. Radio on. Left hand volume up. some difference that is better it's not perfect but there's definitely a bit more gain yeah yeah I'd say that is better actually So that was worth the pain of taking it off and tweaking that little potentiometer. I'll be honest, I'm not sure if it was for the FM signal, but it seemed to be in the right place near the aerial. You'd assume logic would sort of uh, exist. And back to tape. Well to do, though crippled in his expenditure. But as for the cousin, he was left a beggar with many to beg from him. 
tape seems to work absolutely fine to be honest with you let's pop the air roll back down Or even make carpet. Yeah. Which, in the case of Alice, not bad at all. After a while, they found the matter gone too far for London, as violence and deadly outrage stained the house. As bad as I thought it would be, to be honest every with you. It's her actually rather nice. And every man turned pale at the very name of the police. I would much rather have something like this than one of the uh, supposed new equivalents, which um, uh, seem to be sort of out and around. Um, I know Techmoan reviews those, and he has a similar opinion to me, to be honest with you. Um, it's sort of actually sort of a better idea to get um, a unit from, say, the sort of 1980s or 1990s that's in good condition and has been looked after than to purchase one of the newer devices because the newer devices they're just they're not great to be honest with you they're not great but um you know something a little bit older which was sort of built at the time when this was very a very popular format they're really not bad at all so yeah i'm rather pleased with that anyway Anyway, if you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell and don't forget to do other stuff like that. I've just realised I need to rewind that because it's always good practice to keep tapes rewound, both video cassettes and audio. So are you going to rewind? That's interesting. Hmm, fair enough. I'll fast forward it to the other side so it's better. Not going to be too annoyed if that's a little bit dodgy to the wind. It plays back so I don't have to completely dismantle it, which is um, good news. <laughs> anyway, as I say, don't forget to like, subscribe and see you next time.